Hey guys, Brandon Zerby here, and I've found a way to quit sugar, to climb out of extreme debt, and to break away from addictive video games. I've also stayed away from addictive substances throughout my life like nicotine, caffeine, or alcohol. And I've continually taken strides to improve my health and happiness over the years, but it seems that there's just one habit that I can't break. One habit that, despite being well-versed in its mechanisms and putting protocols in place for prevention, that I find slowly creeping its way back into my life. One habit that I can't do in moderation with any real effectiveness, and one habit that slowly depletes my productivity and motivation almost as much as I would assume a drug would. And that's the social media algorithms. Now, what are these algorithms? Why have we fallen in love with algorithms? And why do they slowly suck out and extort the happiness, health, productivity, and motivation in our lives? And is there anything we can do to prevent it? I don't really know, to be honest, but let's get into it. So an algorithm is just a mathematical process or set of rules that produces an output based upon an input. And so if I were to input the word dog into Google, the algorithm is going to run in the background trying to determine what information I'm seeking and it's going to output information. In this case, it's going to output some fun facts about domesticated canines and some pictures of dogs, which is what I was looking for. So input, algorithm, output. And the better that algorithm is, the more likely it's going to produce an output that is more desirable, more relevant, and more interesting to me. And this has incentivized many different companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, and TikTok to create more sophisticated algorithms that produce more desirable results to the end user. And to do this, these algorithms are now taking in more inputs to create more tailored outputs that you're going to be more interested in. So instead of just looking at what you type into Google, Facebook, Amazon, or TikTok, they're now looking at which results you tend to click on which results you spend the most time looking at, which results end up leading to purchases, which results you share with others or interact with, and which results just keep you on their platform for longer and longer periods of time. And this sounds like a good thing because the more inputs they are taking in, the more desirable results and relevant results that they can provide to you. And that's something that you want. You want relevant information provided to you. And it's why we've fallen in love with these algorithms. If you were to open Facebook, you're going to see a feed of posts, events, and pictures from your friends. And based upon your previous behavior, that feed is going to be sorted based upon what information they think is most relevant to you and what you'd be most interested in. So you're most likely to see your best friend wedding pictures come up first compared to, say, an old coworker who's griping about strawberries that were moldy at Wegmans. And these relevant results make you more likely to keep scrolling on Facebook until the algorithm algorithm can no longer provide information that's as relevant or as interesting to you to where you end up getting bored and leave the platform. And if you were to log on to your Amazon account, you're going to see product recommendations based upon your previous purchase history. And if you were to open a Maps application, you're going to see suggested destinations based upon your previous history, current location, and where it thinks you may be headed next. And this is all a good thing because what these algorithms are doing is it's sorting through all the information, tons of information in this world, and providing you with the most relevant, most desirable results that will be most useful for you. It's why if you were to take someone else's phone and log into their Amazon account or their Facebook account, you're going to see information that just isn't that interesting or relevant to you. And you're going to spend a lot less time on the platform because it's not tailored to you. These algorithms know us better than we know ourselves, and they provide us the information that's most relevant and most desirable. And this is a good thing but it causes a few problems. The algorithm's results can become so good that it's hard to stop consuming. For example, I did a quick search for dog on Google just to confirm what a dog was, and it provided the right results that I was looking for, a domesticated canine with relevant pictures, but it also provided results that I wasn't looking for that it thinks I might be interested in. Which dog can kill a lion? That information never crossed my mind during my initial inquiry, and I also don't think it's useful information for me to know, but now I'm curious and interested to find out what the results are. I click on that link to find out the answer, and now Google populates two more questions that I might be interested in. Which dog is banned in India? I mean, again, another question that I guess is piquing my interest that I'm curious to know about, but it's not useful information. I never inquired about this initially, and it's just keeping me on the platform longer by piquing my interest. And this algorithm will keep going on forever, producing more and more relevant questions until I get bored, until the results, the output of the algorithm are no longer keeping me interested and on the platform. And with more engaging social media platforms like TikTok or Instagram Reels, it could be astronomically easier to fall down into this rabbit hole than other traditional forms like Google. And with these algorithms, 
algorithms tend to do increasingly as you spend more time in the platform is output results that are more crazy, more interesting, more engaging, but they also tend to be less useful, less informational, less knowledgeable. And so you might have come to the platform for just a quick, healthy apple to snack on, but then you leave with a stomach ache filled with apple pie. And the second problem is even if you're able to limit your consumption to just that healthy apple that you came for, that apple pie is just sitting there waiting in your pocket, ready to be consumed at any moment. And now that we carry our phones on us like assault rifles in a war, anytime we're bored, anxious, or need an escape, we can succumb to the algorithms waiting to fill that void. And the algorithm's latest TikTok trend or viral Instagram reel is almost always more short-term rewarding than some of the healthy long-term habits like reading a book, cooking a meal, or working out, or getting work done and being productive. It's just so convenient and so rewarding that it's hard to put the phone down even if we know the ramifications. So let me quickly touch on some of the results I've talked about before and what I've learned in the process. So just to recap the problem, the algorithms in these social media apps like TikTok and Instagram Reels provide increasingly interesting content that keep us engaged and locked in on the platform. These results are almost always more short-term rewarding than the healthy activities we should be performing and instead. And with these apps being conveniently available at all times of the day, sitting right there in our pockets, I've found it very difficult to limit my screen time over the long term. So previously I've outlined a few different suggestions, like setting up app limits that stop you from using an application after a certain amount of time, or turning off notifications, which can remove a trigger for initiating screen time, or changing your display to black and white to make the content being displayed less interesting. But even these solutions are designed just to moderate my behavior. And while I found the tactics have worked in the short term, over the weeks and months following that, my screen time tends to increase and creep back to where it was before. Maybe I ignore the app limitation for one day, or turn on notifications for close friends, or just bring back the color display for a few different videos I'm watching. Whatever it is, the trends in my screen time always seem to increase and come back to where I started initially. I mean, as addictive as sugar is, you at least have to go to your pantry, your kitchen, or the store to get it. And as addictive as alcohol can be, you at least have to consume enough and wait a certain period of time before you have the effects. But with the social media algorithms, this dopamine boost is instantly waiting so conveniently in your pocket and the results rarely disappoint. And as much as I like to think that I can control my behavior on these social media platforms, I know I'm fighting a war against these algorithms, which are built by highly paid doctorate level employees that sole goal is to understand my behavior and keep me engaged on the platform as long as possible. And that's a hard fight to win. So I don't know if I have a great solution to this other than keeping my phone physically as far away from me as possible, like in another room throughout the day, or possibly maybe removing social media apps from my phone. While I haven't taken that second step yet, it might be the only step that creates a real solution. And I should mention that even as my screen time climbs back up to originally where it started at, and I know it's having a problem on me because my motivation and my productivity has decreased, my average time on my phone is still just below four hours, which is a lot, but when I looked up the research, that's the average amount of time that an American is typically spending on their phone in a day. So here are my final thoughts. An algorithm is just a mathematical equation that takes in an input and produces a relevant output. And the more sophisticated these algorithms become, the more engaging, interesting, and relevant their outputs tend to be. But with these algorithms having a never-ending supply of outputs that are always interesting and relevant, it's hard to not overconsume information, especially when these dopamine hitting results are sitting there just waiting in our pocket. And although I've attempted many different solutions to fix this and moderate my behavior, I tend to see my screen time coming back originally to where it started. And although I don't consider myself to be addicted, I do see the ramifications of consistently choosing the short-term dopamine boost over these long-term rewarding healthy activities like working out, running, reading, and work. And I've yet to find a satisfactory solution to this problem other than keeping my phone in a different room physically from me or removing all social media apps from my phone. So thanks for stopping by. If you did like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. It really helps on my channel. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lastly, I offer a free health kit, which has my top 10 sleep tips, one whole foods plant-based recipe, and a mobility workout that you can stream on any device. That is free. There's a link down in the description for that. It also gets you signed up to my weekly newsletter, where I provide the three most important things I've read, watched, or listened to within the past week. All that completely free. Link down in the description if you're interested in that. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.